my queen's queen. Check, Celeste. And checkmate, my dear. Let's see, that makes... Ten games for you, and none for me. This just isn't my day. How about making it best out of 21? Hello, Mother. Hello, Father. What are you doing? Why, Alexander, I hardly recognized you. You've grown so much. Yep, I'm bigger now. Just bigger enough to catch up to the other kids. Whoa, Alexander. Ah! <laughs> are you all right? <laughs> no, because I'm still littler than Palm and Flora and, and all the other kids, and, and they tease me. But you're just a little bit littler, Alexander. But I want to be like everyone else. I know how you feel. Why, I remember when I would have given my right tusk to be just like the other kids. You, Dad? It's true. I can remember only too well. I was living in the city with Madame. It was my first day at school. A day that I had been looking forward to for a long, long time. And I just couldn't wait to get started. Please, try to hold still, Baba. But I'm so excited. It's my first day of school. My, you look absolutely scholarly. Thanks, madame. Goodbye. But you forgot your books. Baba, your lunch. I'll tell you all about it tonight. Good luck, Baba. School promised to be quite an experience for a little elephant from the jungle. And although I was nervous about meeting so many new children, I was certain everything would go well. I could just imagine. Necessary. N E C E S S A R Y. My teachers would be so impressed by my knowledge that I would graduate at the top of my class. Oh! This tree branch sure is mushy. Hey! Who, who said that? My name's Babar. Did you lose your glasses? No. I have them right here. I don't wear them in case... In case what? What are you looking for? Say! Look at you! You're an elephant! Yes, and as of today, I'm also a student. Pleased to meet you, Babar. My name's Francois. Say, that's a neat nose you've got there. Look out! <laughs> you almost became a goalpost, Francois. Phew, you had me worried. I thought it was the Lyons. Sorry. Nice catch! And such a nifty catcher. Where I come from, it's called a trunk. <gasps> what do we have here, Maurice? I'm not exactly sure, Marcel, but I'm certain that I don't like it. My sentiments exactly, Maurice. Good morning, children. Good morning, Mademoiselle Charbonneau. Mademoiselle Charbonneau. Hurry along now. We don't want to be late for class. I'll follow you. I don't understand what's going on here. <sighs> don't worry, Babar. You'll find out soon enough. Francois, your book is upside down. It doesn't matter. I've read this book so many times, I know it by heart. The Three Musketeers. I love this book. The best swordsmen there ever were. Lunge, thrust, parry. What an adventure. Babar, would you please stand up? Class, I'd like to introduce a new student. His name is Babar. I'm sure you'll all make him feel at home here. Francois, your glasses, please. All caps off inside the school, Luke. And Lisa, hands away from your mouth. Yes, Mademoiselle Charbonneau. That's better. Let's begin our first day of class. Would someone like to pull down the map? Babar? At first, things came easily for me. I was a big help to my teacher when it came to handing out assignments, and I answered all my questions with flair and accuracy. A 
And although the Lyon brothers continue to make everyone feel self-conscious about their differences, like teasing Francois about his glasses, I kept right on using my trunk to my advantage. Fantastic! Record time! I quickly became the hit of the class, and the Lyon brothers were not impressed. We'll continue this after lunch. Class dismissed. Well, Francois, how am I doing so far? The Lyon brothers are gone. Francois? I've got a bad feeling about this. The lunchroom's straight down the hall. You can't miss it. Look at that! What? What? Look at what? Are you gonna try out, Francois? Try out for what? The school fencing team. We could both try out. It would be just like the Three Musketeers. Well, two of them anyway. What do you say? I don't think I'd be very good without my glasses. So wear them. Run, thrust, parry. <laughs> one for all and all for one. Hey, the Leons! Let go, let go! You were right, Marcel. This thing is attached. Where I cut from, it's called a crook. Perhaps, but around here it's called a hose nose. I thought hose nose was quite clever, didn't you, Maurice? Clever and extremely amusing, Marcel. Didn't you think so? <laughs> Much better. Now lift it, you two. It is you who will listen. Marcel? Ow! Oh, no! <laughs> Hose nose. Francois, you. everybody laughed at me. No, we didn't. Really. We know what it's like to be in your shoes. There's nothing funny about that. It's just that the Leon brothers pick on anyone who's different from them. When I lost my two front teeth, I stopped speaking altogether. You may not have noticed, but I have a lisp. And I used to be one of their favorite victims until I stopped wearing my glasses. They picked on me, too, till I got these shoes. And me, until I started wearing this cap. And believe me, it's not easy stuffing all this into a little cap. But a lot easier than it's gonna be for you to find a way to hide your trunk. But why not just tell Mademoiselle Charbonneau about the Lyons? Because if you tell, you'll be in double trouble. Why are you standing in the hall? Um, we were, uh, we were just looking at the fencing poster. That's right, yes. We, uh, all wanna try out. Yes. Fencing. Yeah, we do. Well, as coach of the fencing team, I'm pleased to hear that. But as your teacher, I must tell you that fencing is for after school. Right now, you should be eating your lunch. <laughs> <laughs> the Leons! They're waiting for you, Babar. If I were you, I'd hide that trunk. No, I don't care. I'm not hiding my trunk, and they can't make me. Oh, oh yes, yes, they, they can. can. Then I'm going. Where? to find somewhere else to eat my lunch. You're going to eat all alone? No, I'm taking my trunk with me. Maybe we should go with him. No, Francois. I think right now he needs to be alone. <laughs> then what did you do, Father? I stuck to my guns, Alexander. I refused to give in to the Leon brothers' bullying. Babar's thought about it over lunch. Me too, Luke. He can't stand up to the Leon brothers. He either hides his trunk or he's asking for trouble. Hey! <laughs> Is there a problem, Babar? No, Mademoiselle Charbonneau. <laughs> 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 Babar? Babar? How could a day that started out so well end so badly? The teasing hurt me so much that I dreaded the thought of ever seeing the Leon brothers again. You're teasing me, Babar, being so quiet when you know I'm just dying for you to tell me everything about your first day at school. So, how was it? Fine. Did you meet lots of new friends? A few. Wonderful. When you were late coming home, I assumed you had. 
Well, I was cleaning chalkboards. I got into a little trouble. On your first day? Yes, but it's not the chalkboards. It's... They make fun. I mean, I... I just don't want to go to school anymore. Baba. Baba, can I speak with you? Are you all right? They made fun of my trunk. They made fun of me because I'm different. Yes, Baba, you are. But so am I. And so is everyone. We're all different in our own way, and that's what makes us all so special. Well, I wish I wasn't so special. Then maybe I wouldn't get so much attention. Well, keep in mind that you're also the new boy in class. In time, the others will get to know you, and you'll fit right in with them. You really think so? I'm certain. School tomorrow, so get some rest. Good night, my dear. Good night, madame. Things will look a lot better in the morning. No, they won't. They'll look just the same. Just as different. So when you woke up in the morning, father, did things look a lot different? No, not different, Alexander. It looked just the same. But Madame was right. Things definitely looked better. You see, during the night, I had come up with a plan. So you understand, Francois. I'm not giving in to the Leones. This is just... just a tactical disguise. Sure. Just like the time the Three Musketeers disguised themselves as women to fool the King's guards. <laughs> yes, just like the Three Musketeers. I was confident my trunk disguise would work. And it did. That is, until I found out I was allergic to false whiskers. I tried everything to hide my trunk, but even painting it to look like a tie didn't fool the Leon brothers. The truth was that my trunk was there to stay, and there was nothing I could do to change that. Every day I went to school, and every day the Leon brothers tied it in knots. I just had to find a better way to disguise it. This'll never work. A few more knots in your trunk, and it's not gonna work either. But how will I get this past Mademoiselle Charbonneau? Well, maybe we could convince her that elephants shrink if they get wet. It was just an idea. I can't hide what I am. You tried to help. Thanks. But Babar, you can't give up. What about the Leons? There's not much I can do about them, Francois. There's not much any of us can do. They're gonna make your life miserable. I know, Lisa. I guess school isn't gonna be what I hoped it would be. Maybe you can keep the tent and join the Foreign Legion. Or better yet, you can join the Three Musketeers. What? The fencing team. That's the one thing the Leons can't spoil for you. That's right! It's after school. And the Leons are always the first ones out the door, the minute class ends. We could all try out. I will, you will, me too. And me. What do you say, Babar? All for one and one for all. <laughs> On guard, you knaves. Take that and that. Thrust, parry, taste, steal. Now, if there are any more who dare to challenge the one musketeer, let him step forward. Ah! One at a time, one at a time. The Leon Brothers. Brothers. They heard we are trying out for the fence. Team. Just imagine! The Leo brothers with swords! Oh, no! Ah! I'm pleased you've all decided to try out for the team. I'll go and get a few more foils. Babar, where are you going? Anywhere but in there. But you can't leave! The Leons will turn him into a pincushion. Francois? He's in there? What are we gonna do? I have to get him out of there. You can't do it alone. You'll need help. Lots of help. Okay, are you with me? Hey, stop it! Leave me alone! Help! Leave him alone! Babar? Is that you? Well, look what we have here, Maurice. Yes, Marcel. I do believe Hose Nose is addressing us. We will attend to you after we've finished with your friend. Francois, put on your glasses! Go ahead, Francois. Put them on. Yeah. Then we can take them off. Don't listen to them, Francois. Put them on so you can see. 
I... I can't, Babar. I just can't. I told you to wait your turn, Hose Nose. For the last time, it's called a trunk. And when I'm finished, you're both going to wish you had one. All for one and one for all. On guard! What's going on? What's happening? It's two against one. Look out, Baba! It's an ambush! Huh? Oh! Toes, nose! Fair fight! Brothers won't be staying for the tryouts. <laughs> Just as well. I couldn't find any more foils anyway. I salute you, Babar. No, Francois, I salute you. No, I insist. Stay! What about us? One for all, all for one! <laughs> Fantastic! No one will ever tease me for being littler again. That's the spirit. I'll show them. Oh, I, I think you missed the point, Alexander. Do you mind if I have a try, my dear? Oh, thank you. Alexander, please. This just isn't my day. Come on, children. Be right there, Dad. Last one down's a rotten egg. Bye, Dad. Later. See ya. See you later. Time waits for no one, and neither does the school bus. Babar, I've had it up to here with Rhino Land. And a very good morning to you, too, my friend. What's the problem? Just look at that mess. Look at it. More trouble with the Rhino Customs Office? You never get anything but trouble from the Rhino Customs Office. That and Rhino Red Tape. They've got my frosty cone machine. 
According to this, the Rhino Customs officials claim your frosty cone machine doesn't meet Rhino mechanical safety standards. It's a plot! They're out to ruin me! My customers expect frosty cones and six delicious flavors! I've already advertised! All right, Sapphire. Leave it with me. I'll see what I can do. Thanks, Bad Bar. Will someone volunteer to tackle this problem? All right, Victor. Take this rope and join it to the other one. No problem. I can't reach it. Ugh. Now that we see the limitations, how do we solve the problem? Oh, I get it. Ta-da! Very good, Victor. Any other solutions? There is an easier way. Yes, Paul? What's your idea? we call an elegant elephant solution, Victor. Big deal. My way's more fun. So, may I try now? Of course, Flora. Alexander, would you hand me the other rope, please? Good thinking, Flora. Hey, that's cheating. Yeah, no fair. You had help. That's enough, thank you. We've seen three different ways of tackling the same problem. Victor used his physical strength. Pom used his wits, and Flora solved the problem with cooperation. We've also seen that people can disagree on ways of solving problems. If we took the time to understand our neighbors' problems and help solve them through cooperation, there would be less misunderstanding and much less arguing. Now for our assignment. <laughs> I would like each of you to devise new ways of improving cooperation and understanding between neighbors. That will be all for today. Class dismissed. <laughs> Gee, Madame really knows how to make you think. Yeah, so anybody got any brilliant ideas? I hate Royal Homage Day. Oh, perhaps it'll be different this year, Your Lord High Grumpiness. Oh, oh sure. My subjects are supposed to love me and shower me with expensive gifts. But, oh no, I never get any presents. No one ever strews rose petals in my path or writes heroic poems about me. Last year, not one of my lousy, rotten, ungrateful subjects even turned up. Uh, I was there, sir. Big deal. Ah! Oh! What? Oh, Baba. What? A frosty cone machine? You're joking. I don't know anything about Zephyr's rotten frosty cone machine, and even if I did, I wouldn't care. Hang up on him, Basil. Wow! Sorry, Babar. Goodbye. Basil, how did I do in the popularity poll this year? Ugh. Well, according to a random sampling, you are slightly more popular than a plague of locusts. Oh. It's an improvement, sir. Last year, you were less popular than a volcanic eruption. What's wrong with my subjects? Babar's popular. What's he got that I haven't got? You have a couple of hours, sir. It's a rather long list. And the day after tomorrow is Royal Homage Day. Another endless, empty, lonely day for me. Well, Your Highness, maybe you could try a little public relations ploy. Say, free frosty cones for everyone? Now, where are we gonna get free frosty cones? Silly me. At the custom shed, of course. Basil, get down there and bring back that frosty cone machine. <laughs> They're gonna love me! There are any number of our neighboring kingdoms that could benefit from learning how we do things here in Celesteville. Thanks for all your help, Pompadour, but we're trying to come up with a project to show how neighbors can learn from each other's way of doing things. Ah, I'm sorry, Zephyr, but Texas just has different ways of doing things. Yeah, a lousy, rotten, cheating different way of doing things. I just thought of the best project ever! And I think I know what you're thinking. Hi, nice to see you. That's right, folks, frosty cones courtesy of yours truly. Your valiant leader and all-round sweetie. Remember me on Royal Homage Day. Bring gifts. Good news, sir. Since you started handing out free frosty cones, your popularity's gone up. I knew it. The way to the hearts of my people is through bribery. You are now two points more popular than a rattlesnake bite. Brat, what more can a good king do? Hi, Dad. Basil. Um, Dad. You love me, don't you, son? 
Yeah, sure, Dad. There, you see? Add that into the poll. How about a frosty cone, son? Dad, we're learning about cooperation in school, and Alexander and I came up with this project. Now we're... Preposterous! You want King Babar to trade places with Lord Rataxis? Yeah, it's only for one day. That way Father and Lord Rataxis can see the kinds of problems each other has to face. It would promote understanding. And maybe that's the problem. We never really have tried to understand each other. I think the children are right. I think it's a fine idea, children. Uh, but as we all know, there is no way Retexas would ever go for such a radical, forward-thinking concept. Oh, hello, Retexas. Yes, as a matter of fact, we were just discussing that very thing. Certainly. Goodbye. It's on. Tomorrow, Retexas and I are trading places. Thanks for having me. It'll be great for you. Oh, dear. You'll have time for all this recreation, Your Highness. I thought you were going to Celesteville to study the reasons for Babar's popularity. So, how long could that take? Have a good day, Dad. I intend to, and you keep an eye on that elephant, son. That's the whole idea, Dad. I'm an official project observer. And don't let Babar push you around, Basil. That's my job. <laughs> Baba, we beg you to reconsider this. Retaxis and I are trading places for just one day. What could possibly happen? Now let's all do our best to make this project work. Good luck, everyone. Bye, Dad. Have fun. Good luck. There goes the end of an era. And here comes the beginning of the end. <laughs> ah, my new kingdom. My people, my lackeys, bring my things up, then wash my car. It was a dusty trip. I don't think we're going to enjoy this at all. Perhaps he only needs a small adjustment period. Food! A banquet! Lord Retaxis, King of Celesteville, is hungry! And then again, perhaps not. <laughs> Very sharp, Trooper. Very nice, Basil. Let's go. Um, Babar? You've forgotten something. I've inspected the Royal Guard. What else am I supposed to do? Yell at them, sir. If you don't give them a good yelling at, they'll think you're angry with them. That's absurd, Basil. Perhaps, Your Majesty, but I really think you should yell at them. It's one of their few pleasures in life. I'm only taking over Retaxis' office for the day, not his personality. Oh, please, sir. It would make them so happy. Do you think this is necessary, Victor? I'm here only as an observer. <clears throat> uh, attention, guards. Attend! Hut! Very good, sir. Now, which one would you like to wrestle? Wrestle? Oh, yes, sir. It's a rhino tradition. In order to maintain the respect of the Royal Guard, you have to wrestle one of them. And win. Lord Retaxis has never lost. That is a ridiculous and unnecessary military tradition. They can wrestle each other all they want, but I won't do it. Come on, Basil. I'm sure there are miles of rhino red tape to unravel. <laughs> Horns! Is this all he does? Paperwork is an important part of King Babar's duties. Now, if you don't mind, sign there. I do. I'm a ruler, not a clerk. Go fetch my golf clubs. Babar, what have you done about my frosty coat? What? With taxes? Ah, a loyal subject. Meet our king for a day. <coughs> Lord Retaxis and King Babar have changed places. It was our idea for a school project. We're trying to promote understanding. How can I help you, my good fellow? For a start, you can tell me what right you've got to impound my frosty cone machine. And then you can clear it through Rhino Customs and deliver it to my mold shop immediately. Zephyr, I don't think... I demand fairness. I demand equity. I want a straight answer. What you want, you little monkey, is a few days cooling off in a dungeon. Clap him in irons! I'm uh, afraid we don't uh, have a dungeon, Lord Retaxis. 
Then build one. Meanwhile, I'm off to mingle with the populace. I'm gonna find out what makes Babar so annoyingly well loved. Clapping the irons? I'm starting to see what Madame was talking about. Different solutions to the same problem. Yeah, it takes Dad hours to calm Zephyr down once he gets going. Clapping the irons? What's going on here, Basil? This? Um, well, it's a little popularity boosting program Lord Retax has set up. <laughs> What's the matter with him? I told you, sir, you should have wrestled with the guard. This is Zephyr's frosty comb maker. Well, uh, it seems such a terrible waste having it sit down in the custom shed, sir. I'm shocked, Basil. It's one thing to impound the machine because of regulations, but it's quite another to actually use it. Why, it's, it's theft. It's, uh, just a little bending of the rules, sir. It happens all the time around here. Well, I won't be a party to it. I want that machine in Zephyr's malt shop where it belongs. <laughs> now, fellow rhinos! Whoa! Uh, remain calm! Uh, well, a little calmer would be even better. Whoa. Whoa. Now, now, please, don't... don't hey, hey, ow! Do I detect a touch of civil unrest? I get the feeling Retaxes would have handled that differently. <gasps> Announcing the father of our fighting forces, a mountain of military munificence, a shining star Save of... your breath, maneuvers, boy! General Pamir, commander of the army, reporting. <clears throat> How very nice to see you again. Do sit down. Sit down? Why sit down? The fighting man's gotta be on the move. I eat standing up, I sleep standing up. Why, I eat... How very admirable. So, what is it you want, then? Plan 42 slash 4 for your approval. An all-out sneak attack on the conniving elephant, sir! What do you think? No, I don't think so, General. Listen, Babar, a little declaration of war would be just the thing to salvage your reputation with the men. Absolutely not. Oh, all right. Please? N. O. No. You've got a lot of spunk, Babar. Well, thank you, General. I hate spunk! Why is this malt shop closed? If you'll remember, Lord Retaxes, you, um, threw Zephyr in jail. You! You're the new owner of the mop shop! Get in there and make me a banana split! Please! See? I said please! I'm as polite as the next king, but it never seems to work out. What about your banana split? Changed my mind. Hello, good citizens. Hi there! How am I doing? Tell me, my good fellow, why do you like King Babar so much? Yeah, perhaps because Babar is a courteous and thoughtful king? So am I! That can't be it! Watch it, peasant! Kings have right away! Hey! Stop that! I'm king! This way, Lord Metaxas! They can't do that! I'm king! Throw them all in the dungeon! Well, sir, I've done as you asked. I've given the populace one day off a week. But I don't think they'll like it. Why wouldn't they, Basil? Everyone needs a day to relax. Believe me, Babar, if there's one thing rhinos are good at, it's relaxing. The normal rhino workday consists of a few hours light labor, a long siesta, and then a snack. But if you make them take one day off, they'll have to work harder on the other six and take shorter siestas. Oh, well, a bit of hard work will do them good. Next. Let's see. I've booked the Birdland Jazz Combo into the Rhino Dome, as you suggested. Good, good. A little entertainment cheers people up. Uh, maybe, sir, but it meant I had to cancel the Furniture Smashing quarterfinals. That may not go over too well. <laughs> now what? The Rhinos are revolting! Call out the Royal Guard! Come on, King Babar! We'll get you out the back way! You can come out now, sir. We've outrun them. And if I'm not mistaken, that's Cornelius and Pompadour up ahead. Thank goodness. For Texas, I'm afraid I've left you a few problems to deal with back in Rhino Land. Wait till you see Celesteville. This is unbelievable. We've got enough here to write a whole book. Never mind a project. Well, I hope you kids learn something from all this havoc you've caused. More to the point, Retaxis. I think you and I have learned something. Perhaps. 
Still, I haven't learned a thing about improving my popularity. Tomorrow is going to be another miserable royal homage day. And it couldn't happen to a nicer person. <laughs> Goodbye, Lord Retaxi. Sir! Sir! I know, I know. Nobody brought me any presents. Again. No one turned up. Again. I hate Royal Homage Day. But, sir! Look! They've been pouring in ever since the people heard you'd come home. Basil, you hear that? They're calling for me. My people love me. Here's to a perfect mark on the project. And may all neighbors understand each other. What a day I've had. I haven't seen so many ruffled feathers since the hurricane in Ostrich Land. Ah, hello, Babar. I've just come to thank you for putting my popularity rating into the stratosphere. My people love me. They rate you three points lower than Poison Ivy. <laughs> And as a gesture of thanks, I've cut through the red tape and brought Zephyr his frosty cone machine. <laughs> Hello, Zephyr, my little friend. I'll have a triple banana split. Uh, please. Not the bananas, eh? And thanks to you, kiddies, I've acquired a whole new appreciation of the difficulties Babar has in running Celesteville. It seems elephants just don't take to my uh, freewheeling style. And my even-handed approach didn't go over very well in Rhinoland. Anyway, it was all worthwhile to find out my people love me. On a day like today, I feel like everybody loves me. Your order, sir. What? I'll show him clapping irons. Of course, there is that old saying, Vitaxi. You can please some of the people some of the time, but don't ever get Zephyr angry with you. <laughs>
look so easy. Hey, Alexander, I'm trying to practice. No, it's me. Your mother says it's time to come in. But the team tryouts are tomorrow! Please let me practice for another five minutes! Well... Please, Father! I suppose five minutes can't do any harm. But that's all, or we'll both be in trouble with your mother. <laughs> Thanks! team. If not, try again next year. Edward, Daniel, Richard, Andrew, Francis, Alexander. Oh, and Pom, the towel boy. Towel boy? Never mind. You made the team, but I don't want to be the towel boy. I'm sure you'll get to practice with us, and if you improve, who knows what could happen? You think so? Well, sure. Okay. I guess being a towel boy isn't so bad. Hungry little fellow, isn't he? Alexander probably forgot to feed him. Mom! Dad! I made the team! Well done, Alexander. That's wonderful, dear. I'm also the captain again. Your coach certainly has good judgment. Pom, how did the tryouts go? All right, Father. Didn't you make the team, Pom? Yes, Mother. I made the team. Good for you. All that practice paid off. That's splendid news. But, Dad, Pom didn't thank you, Father. We're both happy we made the team. He should have told Dad the truth. He'll find out. Dad finds out everything. But by then, I'll be on the team. I'm only the towel boy until I get better. You said so yourself. 
That could take a while. But I know a way you could get better fast. How? I could give you lessons. Why would you do that? Um, to get you on a team, of course. You're not just saying that because you want something. Are you? Uh, well, I knew it. What do you want? Your new Dr. Franken test poster? What? You don't have to. All right, Alexander. Deal? Only if you promise not to tell Father. I swear on my tusks. Well, I will want to get them. Deal. You know what to do? I think so. going to get this. You won't if you keep saying that. My turn. But I thought these were my lessons. They are. Then why is it your turn? Because it's your turn to work on defense. Ugh. Did not. Did to. Did not. Did to. Prove it. Forget it. The lesson's over. Alexander? What are you doing? Just putting up a poster, Mom. Doesn't that belong to Pom? He gave it to me, Dad. But I thought it was Pom's favorite. Gee, Mom. I don't think so. Anyway, Alexander, time for bed. <laughs> Something's going on, Baba. <laughs> I'm sure we'll find out sooner or later. Bedtime, son. Okay. How's practice going? Good, Father. Alexander was saying that you're doing very well. He was? He told us you were practically the team's top player. Alexander said what? Yes, dear, well done. And I understand it's your first game on Friday. I had Pompadour clear my schedule. You're not gonna go! I'll be looking forward to it all day. Good night, son. Sweet dreams, Palm. What am I going to do? You don't understand, Father. It's only an exhibition game. That's fine, Pom. It'll probably be really boring. I'm sure it won't, son. But, but, what about the speech you cancelled? Pompadour has rescheduled it. <laughs> Between you and me, I'm happy you're going to your game. Wrong, dear. Mother, you and Father can't go to the game. N no other parents are going. They're not? I mean, I know I said that Peter's parents were going, but they work at the school. Oh. And it's not that I don't want you to go, it's just that I don't think you should go. I mean, what if I don't play very well? I see. You do? I think so, dear. Then you won't come to the game? Well, not unless you want us to, but I think you should know that your father would be very disappointed. He would? It doesn't matter whether you play well or not, Palm. As long as you give it your best effort, we will both be proud. Okay, Mother. Don't worry so much, dear.
I know you're only trying to help Palm, but I don't think he's ready yet. I think he is. In fact, I think he's almost a defensive genius. Well, in that case, I'd better give him another try next practice. But that's too late. I'm sorry. That's the best I can do. <sighs> um, Palm? So? He said he'd give you another try. Next practice. Oh, thanks, Alexander. It's not that bad. At least you're getting a chance. I know. But I still have to face Father at the game tonight. Wonderful turnout. Yes, but I thought Pom said no parents were coming. Trunks to the left, trunks to the right. Stand up, sit down, fight, fight, fight! Celeste, here they come. Good luck, Alexander. Where's Pom? The towel boy? Now everything makes sense. Poor Pom. One, Palm. Oh. Son? Yes, Father? What an exciting game. Do you think we're going to win? Yes, Father. Um, uh, I guess so. 
Actually, our team is really on the ball tonight. Baba, we must get back to our seats. See you after the game, darling. You mean see you after we win? We gotta play better defense. It doesn't matter how many points we score if we can't find a way to stop number 10. But he's too big. Once he gets the ball, nobody can get it. There must be someone who can. Palm! Get changed, Palm. You're in the game. Me? Er, hurry up, Palm. Bamba, look! Palm's going to play! That's my boy. I might find you here. Hi, Father. That was quite some game you played tonight. I've never seen a towel boy save a game before. I'm sorry I didn't tell the truth, Father, but I've learned my lesson. Honest. I'll never not tell the truth again. Never, ever. <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear that, son. However, I want you to remember that whatever you do, your mother and I will always be proud of you. Even if I'm only the towel boy? <laughs> Come on, champ. It's getting late. Oh, Pop. Yes, Father? Where did you learn to steal the ball like that? From practicing with Alexander. It was the only way to get a turn. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. <laughs>